Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. Today I'm gonna to be answering some questions as I have quite a lot of them. Uh, the first question is someone said, where do I store my art? Can I put an Amazon or an affiliate link to it in the description? I store my art, I wrote this, wrote this. I uh, showed this in another video, like one of my first art videos, I'm pretty sure you can find it. It's these gigantic black books. I'm not, I'm not taking it out. The, the, the books are absolutely massive. Um, normally, the print sizes that I collect are 18 by 24 inches. This is the US standard. They vary in Europe and they vary in many other places. Um, the normal size is 18 by 24 inches. This right here is 24 by 36 inches. You can find books for them, but the books are massive. I'm telling you that right now. I will put a link in the description. If I can find it on Amazon and or an affiliate link, I will also do the exact same. Um, yeah, I store a huge portion of my art. I don't know, I, I assume this is what the question is asking. Like, what do I do with my art? Where do I put it? I put a, the 18 by 24 prints in that gigantic black book. The 24 by 36 is I either hang them up in the house or I keep them inside of the tubes. I'll give you a... Um, a uh, hint of how crazy I am. I normally never collect one of anything. I wish I could show you uh, some of the stuff. I, I must have mentioned it in another video very recently. I also have my eBay you, um, comic book business thing. But I also collect them as well because I know that a lot of comics that I get are also like going to go up in value as I get them. And I got like 40 of one comic. It's the same exact thing with art. Like, I'll tell you this right now. Historically, especially for prints from Shepard Fairey, the 24 by 36 prints sell for around 35 to 45 on his website. After they've gone out of stock on his website, typically, normally, historically, uh, the value, even immediately, like you can find some of these for like $100 on eBay, which is also completely insane, 35 to 100 immediately. After they've gone out of stock on his website, you can normally find them for around 185 to 200. After a five to 10 year period, you can find these for like over 500. So my idea kind of is, imagine being able to spend 35 and making 500 over the course of five years. That's, a, that's, a, that's an incredibly healthy return. That's not even like, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a great return. Now imagine if I bought 10 of these, which I normally do, that comes out to $350 to make 5,000. And that's over the course of five years. A lot of his other prints like these, you can't find them anymore. There are no price metrics. Because they're so old, people, all the, all the biggest in investors and the art collectors have them and they're just not selling them anymore. So one can safely assume that over the course of 10 years, the 35 will probably go to around 750. I'm not going to even say 1,000. Over the course of 15 years, it probably goes to 1,000. That means that for every $350 I put into 10 of these, I'm making, what was that, 10,000? over the course of a 10, 15 year period. Did not mean to segue away from the question, but it's kind of that same exact thing. Um, so normally to answer that question, I store a lot of them in the actual tube still. I don't just buy one of them and hang it up somewhere. I have so many of them that I just kind of have to leave them in the tube. Someone was asking also before, not in this line of questions, but someone was asking before, does that damage them? No. You can have them safely in tubes for a very long time. I, I looked into this before as well. I watched other, um, not even other YouTubers, like, like no one else spoke about this, but I found other videos on it on the YouTube and people were saying that they had bought art from 95, had it in the tubes, and then when you take it out, it's very coiled. It's, it's, it's in that same exact shape from when you put it inside the actual thing. If you leave them out for a couple of days, they start to self-flatten. There are no extra waves that really go into it. I haven't really tested it on a 45-year-old print, but I've even bought, um, I think the oldest thing I know, what I, I, I bought a... An Andy Warhol 1971 um, tape poster as well. And that was also rolled up and I left it out for a couple of days and it kind of like flattened itself. You can also put like lightweight things on the corners to kind of also make sure that they end up flat as well should you decide to hang them somewhere in your house. Um, I don't really store it in like a, um, a warehouse or anything really crazy like that. It's just more like a, I store them in the books, I store them in the tubes. Um, the really expensive stuff I have framed and I put that away somewhere as well. So, um, yes, I will try my darndest. Sorry for spending so much time on this question. I will try my darndest to put the affiliate link in the description below. My gosh, sorry for the tangent. Um, the next question is, are dividend stocks good investments? 
Should we hold these stocks? Dividend stocks are great investments. I just made a video on um, how to find a good company. Dividend stocks are excellent, absolutely incredible. I would recommend if you find real estate difficult to get into, if you do not really care to get into the uh, cryptocurrency space because it might be too volatile and or too whatever for you, Dividend stocks are absolutely wonderful. There are a lot of rich people in the world who live off of dividend stocks because usually, typically, dividend stocks every three to four months will pay you a dividend. You get like a check in the mail or a direct deposit to your account uh, because you were holding those stocks. It is a great way to have passive income. Just make sure that if you are going to get into the dividend stock world that you not only do your own research, like I said in the other video, you can watch it and you'll see exactly what I was talking about, but also make sure that you are... Um, just, just get into really good companies. Don't do it kind of willy nilly. Make sure that you are getting into it for the long term, especially also because tax wise, you also pay less in taxes if you hold these stocks over usually most countries over a year. There's a difference between you buying a stock and selling it under a year. You then have um, short term capital gains, but if you hold it for longer than a year and sometimes even longer, depending on which country that you're in, you pay long-term capital gains, which is usually a lower tax rate than if you sold it earlier. Not joking, this is why the rich continue to get rich because they buy stuff, hold on to it, it sprinkles money onto them and they use that other sprinkled money to put into other investments. That's how it works. Next question. Um, oh yes, here we go. Um, someone was said, I should start addressing people copying me on other platforms. Um, there are a lot of people right now who have made um, fake emails of me. I have three channels, two of them revolve around finance. This is Money Rules, and the other one is TMI, The Modern Investor. Um, people have made fake emails, fake TMI emails, fake Money Rules emails, fake telegrams for both channels fake Instagrams. I even saw a couple of fake YouTube channels, but my channels are big enough now that you should be able to tell uh, which one is real and which one isn't. Um, and people are trying to copy me. I can only do so much about this, so it's more so I'm telling you right now. Just understand, I only use YouTube. I post my videos on here, on both channels, and then I post these videos after they're created. I post the link to them on Facebook and on Twitter. That's it. I don't have a, a, a money rules or TMI Instagram. Neither do I have a Telegram. Neither do I have a voice. Neither do I have a, a TikTok. I don't have any of these things. It's just me on YouTube and I post these things on Twitter and Facebook. That's it. So any other person who has contacted you claiming to be me, saying that they are me, especially a lot of people have been telling me that people are contacting them, especially through emails saying, um, I'll give you financial advice if you give me money. Send them, uh, send them a photo of, 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 of a beautiful middle finger because it's not me. I will never ever ask you for money. Um, I ask if you find it in your heart to be a Patreon supporter, but I will never pull your leg and say that I will only give you this fabulous information if you pay me in some sort of way. That's not how I work. I do everything here. So that's how you gather the information. Next question, um, someone said, should you mix emergency funds with other assets? Should you mix your emergency funds with Bitcoin, gold, silver, jewelry, and art? Yes and no. Um, your emergency, emergency, your emergency funds should be incredibly liquid. Ideally, they should be in the fiat currency of your country, wherever you're living, whether that be in a bank account or in cash. I don't know how you keep your emergency fund, but it should be, you should be able to access it at a moment's notice, full period. You can have your part of your emergency fund in Bitcoin because it is liquid enough that you're able to liquidate it rapidly to actually get cash for it, but just understand that Bitcoin and many other cryptocurrencies do have extremely fluctuating prices. This year alone, we went from a Bitcoin price of 3,500 to roughly around 13,000, which is great for your emergency fund because you made so much money. However, a couple of days ago, Bitcoin fell from the 12, $13,000 to 9,990, it has slightly recovered, but it has not recovered this high. So just understand if you're going to put your emergency fund into cryptocurrencies, unless it is a stable coin, there is of course the risk of you being able to lose that money 
rapidly because things like that in the cryptocurrency space happen overnight. Should you have it in gold and silver? Gold and silver are seen as stores of value. They typically, historically, have had uh, steadier, not rates, um, value, worth, than other um, assets. Um, however, this year as well, we have also seen that gold and silver pumped up in price as the Federal Reserve was announcing that they were going to continue printing trillions of dollars to inflate the US dollar to make it easier for people to invest. Sure, why not? Um, but at the same exact time, a couple days later, the price of gold and silver also fell down as the S&P 500 fell down. I would recommend to keep it in a local currency. This is probably the easiest way, unless once again, you decide to put it into a stable coin in crypto, which is mimicking the actual value of the local currency that you have, but then why not just have it in paper money and or in your bank account? Just kind of saying it. Jewelry and art, no. Jewelry is very difficult to liquidate. It's very difficult to sell. If you bought a piece of jewelry for $500, it is going to be very difficult for you to be able to sell said piece of jewelry for $500 again. It's not how jewelry works. And same exact thing for art. Um, if you feel like you've gotten to a point, and I'll say this for all of them, except for jewelry, Bitcoin, gold, silver, and art. If your goal for your emergency fund was to get to $5,000, rough number, random number, and you've reached that goal, you can then start to build a secondary emergency fund that also doubles as an investment fund portfolio kind of thing, i.e. you got the basics down. Should something happen, you have enough money to support yourself for six to 12 months, which is the ideal amount, should you have lost your job, whatever the actual case might be. Once you have that on the side, you can then start to create a Bitcoin emergency fund or a gold and silver emergency fund or an art emergency fund as a backup as well, so that there is a chance, not a guarantee, that these things will rise in value at some point, but you're also able to still liquidate them as well. That's all I'll say on that. Um, so the answer is yes, but probably no. And the last question that someone was asking is, do I buy art to resell? Um, no. I, in the very beginning, I was buying art, not that I was flipping it, but I was kind of testing the waters to see exactly how much I could sell things for. I, I mentioned in another video, this one right here, I got it off the actual website where they used to work with Banksy. It was called POW, Pictures on Walls. I got lucky enough to acquire a lot of these because I saw the future potential for them. Um, and I took one of them because I bought them, they were only 10 pounds when I bought them. And I was like, I wanna see if Banksy's, not if he's the real deal, but I wanna see if, you know, if I can actually sell this thing. And I put it on eBay for 499 and it sold. It was kind of a confirmation to me that not only should I not have sold that, uh, but also a, it is possible to sell it for uh, this price. The art I buy, every asset that I buy, everything except for certain cryptocurrencies, which I told you before on the other channel, I plan on selling because I assume that they're going to do very well during a bull market, but as long-term longevity, I don't see them lasting that long. Um, real estate and art, however, I see lasting for a very long time. I know the art market, I've been in the art market for a while. My art investments have done pretty well. Everything that I buy is for my future family and for my future kids, which I do not have right now. I'm accumulating all these things to have things to pass down onto them and also to be able to make sure that we are hyper financially secure and have no need for want. Is that a phrase? Have no need? We don't want anything. Like we have everything that we need and therefore we don't have to um, want. Easiest way of saying it. I've mentioned this before on the other channel. I'm not sure if I've mentioned it here. I myself believe that we are currently in the midst of a, I don't care for the term wealth transfer, if you want to say that, but I think behind the scenes, something is happening and I think the financial world is going to be flipped on its head very soon. So this is why I've done what I've been doing. I'm not sure if it's just a paranoia that I might have, not really sure, uh, but I know that I'm doing well and I'm going to continue doing it. So I do not, everything I have, I, I buy to keep. Everything. Um, I do hope you all enjoyed. I do hope I answered your questions. If you happen to have any other questions, um, ask me in the comment section below. 
If you're going to ask me about like zombie apocalypses and stuff like that, I'm, I don't know if I can make a video about me answering what I would do during a zombie apocalypse. I apologize, person who asked me what I would do during a zombie apocalypse. I'd run. I'd get a drone. I feel like that would, yeah, that would make sense. I feel like if I got a drone that could like fly into a supermarket and I could like pick the food up and take it back to me, I'd survive pretty long. Are we talking about like walking dead zombies or are we talking about like 28 day later zombies? Cause these, 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 these perish. Cause you know, logic, their body begins to break down. But the walking dead zombies have been alive for about a good like nine seasons and they're still around. So anyway, hope you all enjoy. <laughs> Hope you all are having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening. Wherever you are, wherever you might be, I do hope that it is absolutely fantastic. Thank you all, every single one of you once again for watching and listening. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.